Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to Wines of Italy live stream. Uh, I'm back alone, not with, without Tina, but Tina will probably pop in for a while. So uh, let's see. So we can uh, market our collaboration a bit uh, because we're going to be back further on to do things together. Uh, today, my guest is uh, Giovanni Aiello from Puglia. Uh, he's a small winemaker that I got to know uh, last year at the Radici di Sud event. Um, and then I met him this year again. So I asked him if he wanted to be a guest at his live stream. So I think that uh, today we're going to learn uh, a lot of things about uh, a part of Puglia that I haven't visited yet, but I hope to do so soon. And uh, I also discovered that he he uh, makes wine with uh, some uh, very unique grape varieties that I didn't know that much about, so he will tell us more about them too. So welcome uh, Giovanni, and uh, I don't know, do you want to start to present yourself a bit? Okay. Uh, what you did before? Hi, uh, and, uh, Hi everyone. Nice to, to become a winemaker. Yeah, uh, nice to meet you. It's for me a pleasure and I don't know, it's um, how uh, it's sure. Um, um, Vostro uh, ospite. Well, uh, I'm Giovanni Aiello, and my name it's um, uh, my brand name in the wine industry. It's uh, Enologo per Amore, winemaker for love. A lot of people ask me why that name. It's just because I think I started to be in love with wine when I studied viticulture and uh, winology when I was too young because I was born in the vineyards in Apulia. Uh, but I born in vineyards for uh, table grapes, just difference for, you know, for uh, grape, for vineyards, for um, grapes for wine. And then I continued to study at university, winemaking, and then the first, the, um, uh, the first degree, it's, uh, it was in Conegliano, the second in um, Udine, the master degree. Then I start to have um, experience because I think the very um, the earth of when making is just to have a lot of experience in different place, in different area, in with different grapes, and then you can collect all that um, techniques. And my 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 dreams is to come back in uh, in Italy and apply in my vineyards some some of these techniques learned uh, around the world. Um, well, uh, but I have not started very, very soon when I come back because I continue to work for um, a big farm. It's called Feudi San Gregorio. Uh, and then it's just two years I started my project called Enologo per Amore, Winemaker for Love. Uh, Winemaker for Love um, have its, um, its growth in a part of Apulia uh, called Valle d'Itria, or better, my town is Castellana Grotte. Uh, Castellana Grotte is uh, uh, at the beginning of Valle d'Itria and the heart of Gioia del Colle DOC. Uh, I have two possibilities to work. Uh, for that, I work white wine in Valle d'Itria. It's just in um, five, six kilometers uh, southern Castellana and um, Primitivo Gioia del Colle in Castellana. Um, uh, and then my goal is try to have to represent my territory in a glass of wine. What I mean? Um, for me, the essence of the wine, it's um, when the people can uh, recognize the, the, the area, the style of area in the glass of wine. Uh, for that, my wine, it's a, they have a lot of fresh, it's very hazy, because if you can imagine what is Valle d'Itria, it's an amazing valley, but, um, you know, it's reconnue in the world because they have a truly, truly, it's particular structure, but what it's truly, it's just stone, uh, it's a, a stone, one, um, a, a sculpture of, of stone, but it's very easy, very simple, and also for that, my wine, it's also fresh. Uh, and I can my, this valley. It's a uh, three hundred forty-five meter on level sea. It's very fresh area, and uh, um, we can make uh, a very good white wine. Uh, in the past, With fresh, you mean uh, that there's a lot of uh, wind, or that it blows in from the sea, or that the temperatures? Okay, are... uh, the valley where I, where are your vineyards? It's very particular. It's called Canale di Piero. It's channel. 
uh, this channel um, it's um, 20, 20 kilometers long for two kilometers um, straight uh, and he connect the Murja area the hills from the Murja to the sea and they are almost five three to five degree less than the other uh, the other municipality in the area because the fresh area from the hills on the on the Murja come in uh, go to the sea in this channel it's very particular channel uh, and you know historically it's also very very nice because there in that channel um, uh, they are uh, they born the first trullo in the in thousand yeah 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 the first area of truly born in the in canale di pirro and then they develop in albero bello area uh, it's very very panoramic area and very nice to 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 see uh, at the same time the, the soil it's very it's particular because it's a lot of calcareous and uh, you know castellana grotte grotte it's caves it's a f old territory it's full of caves uh, and also in that channel they are a very big and important caves uh, it's not touristic because it's uh, hard to it's just for um, specialists of uh, uh, cave um, yes. escape yeah. <laughs> and uh, that have a, a lot of importance in the wine you know you can have a lot yeah. of minerality and the, the importance it's also for agriculture because the rootstock can uh, can go down and stay very fresh also in the summer when it's very hot and the plant never 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 have stress from the um, temperature from the heat temperature or um, when they are no water for a long time like last year okay it's very dry <laughs> dry year but they go deep or they just uh, it's just that it's a very fresh area no no, no they go deep the, okay. the 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 root okay on the pen the young uh, implants sometimes have a water have a irrigation system and then the root store they maintain no deep because they have water but old wine um the the rootstock go very deep because the the plants go to church uh, water down in the, in the in the rocks and you said the soil was mainly calcareous or yeah it's they are a lot of calcareous but it's um they are a lot of stones sometimes when you see okay the the the, the soil layer it's very very low and then they are just stones um my area um, it's very it's recognized only not only for truly but also for we call moretti a secco it's just stones they divide the proper the property uh, what i mean uh, all these stones coming from the land coming from the soil and um, uh, everywhere in the area there are a lot of stones in the in a skeleton in the in the soil sometimes in the summer during this and this these stones it's very white sometimes during the summer uh, if you see the the, the vineyards uh, you can have problem with your haze because they reflect you know it's too much white and they reflect the the the, the sun um yeah it, no, it's, very it's very nice. i mean for those yeah. who Thank you. Okay. And then it's very historical area for making wine. Um, okay, in that area, it's very near to the Brindisi port. Uh, Brindisi port, it's very famous because uh, the ancient Roman have a whole, whole business of wine from Italy to the Mediterranean area, uh, depart from Brindisi port. And then there are a lot of vineyards in Apulia because a lot of, they produce a lot of wine and it's close to the port for a, a business and merchant, the wine in the Mediterranean, in Mediterranean area. Uh, for that, in all Apulia, you can find a very, very old system to making wine and also a very, very old variety. 
Um, then in my area, they have also castle, for example, Federico II de Risveria, and it ports from uh, Campania a lot of Fiano. Uh, yeah. It's no yeah. hard to find in this area a Fiano. Uh, then a lot of people um, uh, think Fiano is coming from only from Campania, but also in Apulia, it's very old idea. And yeah. in in other um, and in plus in plus in Valle d'Itria we have a particular fiano they call it minutolo. Um, okay, really, it's no fiano. In the in the past five years, they changed the name at minutolo. Uh, or they changed the name at fiano because the, the 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 old people call fiano, but it's minutolo. It's another variety. Uh, it's just semi-aromatic variety. Uh, it's very important for the wine of the area in Valle d'Itria, uh, but it's not the, the only uh, small variety or old variety. For example, I use no Fiano Minutolo, but I use for uh, my blend for uh, sparkling wine, uh, Maresco and Maruggio. Maresco and Maruggio, it's, um, right now it's very hard to find in the area. Uh, it's two, um, two old variety. Uh, they plant this variety um, together in the in the past they plant together in the vineyard you can usually you can find um, um, uh, this variety uh, mixing with verdeca and bianco d'alessano and minutolo and the other three or four uh, small variety uh, when they change the viticulture in se in, the, in the in the last four years uh, a lot of people they don't use anymore this uh, this uh, this clone, and we lost a lot of in, a lot of uh, identity identity of Valeditia wine. Now they are I am not alone, of course. Uh, the producer <laughs> the producer in my area try to have identity of um, of Valeditia and uh, start to. Uh, reutilized uh, this uh, ancient variety because you know Locorotondo blend it's it was a very very famous white wine from Apulia in the last 30 years now it lost a lot uh, in Locorotondo blend the 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 goal of Locorotondo blend it's just mix the grapes not mix the wine in the past they not mix the the wine just mix the grapes uh, in the vineyard, in the old vineyard, you can find a lot of different kind of variety. Um, for that, I find uh, near to my vineyards. Uh, my vineyard is um, it's a little bit younger than uh, than the other that I found. Uh, in um, close to me, I found um, a very very old. Uh, Hi, Lee Valentin. Yes, yeah, so Lee is yes. <laughs> from New York. And she okay. might be uh, from Julia Lerouan. Uh, right. <laughs> Let's see, let me make it happen. Make it happen. Uh, okay, nice to meet you. <laughs> Welcome. Okay, so continue. Okay, so continue. We're talking about your uh, ancient grape variety. Yeah, right. and um, I have, um, okay, close to my vineyards, I found a very fantastic history and very fantastic vineyards. I found the vineyards have more than hungry years, uh, but the particularity, the particularity, it's not the, 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 the old plant, it's just the people, they work in the vineyards, she is 91 and she husband is 92. And they continue to work in these vineyards every day for 10 hours a day. And they tell me, oh, Giovanni, why you don't work with us for 10 hours <laughs> it's you know because they um, they have a habitude to work every day from sun from the sunset to the to the end of the day uh okay i ask that that um, that um, uh, i call a nonna <laughs> today because uh, we start to have a very friendship with her and i learn a lot from her um, I have two degree in winemaking, but um, I learn more with her because she have 90 years of experience in the vineyards. And she hands, when she work in the, with the plant, uh, it's like natural, you know, it's like a combination 
of energy plant and uh, and uh, and the people and humans uh, it's also for that that i start to call my wine chakra chakra are like energy because um, you know they they are they make a sense if you are imaging uh, soil plant and winemaker uh, when the energy uh, start to have a, um, uh, start to close the the circle uh, you can have harmonia harmonicity uh, okay with the chakra from this old uh, uh, from this old um, person woman, woman uh, I think he have very harmony uh, probably yeah probably just I need more experience with this kind of grapes because um, because I, I want to learn more but the grapes it's perfect um, it's very I mean in sorry Berlin, I mean in her yeah does she cultivate okay. two grape varieties or no, 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 she cultivated just white variety. Uh, yeah. It's principal, it's uh, Verdeca, and then other, other smaller variety. In that vineyard, you really can find a lot of different variety. And um, um, I decided to make a, a particular crew only from that vineyard um, that um, it will be on the market, I think, next January. And it's, it will call um uh, chakra essenza essence okay. uh yeah because his accents of love no uh mm -hmm. she told me because she i asked her uh, but if you um if you um uh, if you don't want to to continue anymore to work i can uh, take these vineyards uh, for rent or just for work inside she tell no uh, i'm sorry uh, uh, still i have life I will work in these vineyards. Later, I hope my son uh, give you the vineyards because my son they don't, don't he want does, to. don't want to work in the vineyards. And then when I when I died, <laughs> I hope for uh, another angry years. <laughs> uh, but when I died, I hope my son give you the vineyards. Uh, but right now, I want to work because it's um, uh, it's memory of my father that that he planted. Uh, before uh, his father, he, it goes in um, first uh, first war, first um, uh, guerra mondiale, la, la prima guerra mondiale in uh, uh, 1912, and he planned the vineyards just for give money uh, to the to the his son, and she told me no, I, I don't give you, <laughs> it's just my memories. Okay, uh, probably it's better because she worked better than me. And uh, work in a very old alberello, it's not easy. <laughs> uh, oh, it's very True. hard. Yeah, it's very hard. Um, so you have yeah. the, the vineyards next to each other, or? Yeah. Okay. I have vineyards uh, near to the to that uh, that um, woman, and then I have uh, another vineyards uh, in Castellana Grotte, just 15 kilometers from that area. Uh, it's uh, primitivo, it's just only primitivo, it's 25 years mm, uh, old. Uh, and then I make from that chakra red and chakra rosato. Um, chakra rosato, okay, start to, to, to with chakra rosato because it's my first project. Chakra rosato born in the vineyards, it's no from Saigne. Uh, it's typical, typical techniques in Apulia, in a hole. Uh, in the past, it's uh, make rosato with techniques of Saigne. Um, I, mm, I want to have a different style of rosato. Um, I want to give uh, um, elegance and fineness at rosato. And then I start to work in the vineyards uh, because if you make red with um, uh, if the goal for red, it's have structure, tendons and color. For rosato, probably it's almost the opposite. Uh, and then I yeah. try to have yeah uh, a rosato fresh with a lot of acidity, fine uh, with um, uh, aroma that remember white wine. And then I start to work in the vineyards for uh, yeah. for, for make that kind of rosato. And then it's from uh, first pressing uh, the um, the grapes uh, just put in the fridge for one night and big fridge for one night. Uh, 
uh, and then they 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 was work um, cold just for do not x up tenants and um, yeah the most I don't want to have a lot of tenants and then the um, the process uh, continues like a white wine um, um, it's rosato that rosato right now give me a lot of um, enjoy because uh, uh very important rest uh, restaurants in napulia start to work this rosato uh also for the packaging because it's the, the first but all my my label it's unpainted uh, i create a particular stamp and then all the label it's different one the each the other i want just one bottle that i can catch you Voila. Okay, this is the stamp. The, yeah. the bottle, they are nothing. <laughs> uh, it's just, uh, punt we call puntini. Uh, I just create the stamp with a, with a clay, with a clue. Uh, this clue I stamp each each label. Uh, that one is Chakra Rosso, obviously. It's uh, red chakra. And... Um, yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> you can have more information about yeah. Uh, yeah. soon. Uh, okay, at the moment, the website it's in, in only in Italian, but I think next week start. Um, the, we have the, the in English, yeah. So, okay. um, yeah, uh, when we arrived on the red. Uh, I have some difference also for the red, because I tell you before, uh, my my goal in the past it was uh, go around the world and um, uh, learn t different techniques in different variety. Uh, I learned the techniques for the first time in California, um, then for the second time in Australia uh, with Pinot Noir. It's called uh, Vendage Entier or Wall Blanche. What I mean. We use it during the harvest, during the vintage, um, the grapes um, without the stem, with the rasp, with the green part. Um, okay, that, te that technique uh, um, requests a lot of CO2 because I don't want to oxidize, ox I don't want oxidation for green part, uh, but I think he gave me um, a different style of, of bouquet, you know, Primitivo uh, or Zinfandel. Um, it's um, very new in the world for this mono directional in fruit, in jam, uh, in cherry, plum, but it's not very, very um, uh, um, ampio bouquet, you know, there are not a lot of uh, no, different. Wide, uh, wide yeah, um, these techniques help me to improve the, the, the bouquet to have other style of not only fruit but we can have some spice some in 2015 in during the aging um, we have also some pepper some tobacco uh, it's it's different style of primitivo uh, and also it's um, uh, the tannins you have different tannins because you extract some tannins from the from the um, uh, from the stem uh, but that tannins, it's very soft. And my idea of making wine, it's, it's um, create uh, a wine easy to drink because my, my goal is when the people open bottle at the table of restaurants and finish the first bottle and hopefully ask the second one. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, sometimes for the challenge, um, Okay, so Angela is also here. Angela Santarelli is a friend of mine from, from Florida. Um, Hi, Angela. Nice to meet you. And she's very it's a for me. Yeah. So uh, yeah, if you have any Angel. questions for Angela or Lee, so he's talking about that he's using, using the, the grapes uh, with the stems in the fermentation to get a more complex bouquet, you know? of the wine yeah and uh, so yeah continue you were talking about the red wine <laughs> oh yeah no worries uh and then yes these techniques uh, help me to have different bouquet 
Um, then the grapes, it's just pressed and monolithic fermentation uh, ever since in, uh, in the barrels. We have uh, no new barrels. I used only uh, the, from the second and third, uh, third passage in the barrels just because I don't want to have a lot of impression of wood in the wine. Uh, but wood helped me for aging because they are micro oxygenation, naturally micro oxygenation. Um, thank you, Angela. And uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, the time that um, that it passed in uh, in the barrel, it's it's not a long, not very long. It's just seven to eight months, uh, and then in the bottle, uh, seven months minimum in the bottle before going in the market. Um, I also try to use a lot of sulfur dioxide and maintain uh, and no filtered wine, just because I don't like um, sugar or sugar residual in the wine. And all my production is without sugar residual, it's just dried. And when you have wine, dried wine, and uh, uh, this wine, it's stabile, uh, it's, it's stable. Stable, uh, stable, yeah. You don't need it to to go with a um, very hard filter. Uh, I, I I I put in the label no filtered wine. Um, for sincerity, I just have a um, five um, nanometers uh, filtration. It's like no filtration, uh, just for hygiene. Uh, and then sulfur dioxide, it's also very very low. Uh, you know, right now in Italy, but I think in the world, they are uh, a bit uh, um, a war for uh, natural wine and commercial, and you know, normal wine or conventional wine. Uh, I think I want to put myself in the middle. I'm artisanal producer. Uh, for me, artisanal, it's the person that give a lot of. Um, um, of um, um, of things at, in all of um, step of production, uh, try to don't intervene a lot with the, with the hand in the winery. But I'm tech too. I used to die ten years at university and research in the wine, and I can't imagine that um, I work a lot in the vineyard and then I tell to the nature, okay, it's your time. Uh, no, <laughs> it's also mine now. Uh, but I try to have the best quality of grapes in the vineyards, and then I don't need it to have clarification to use any chemical products that change the structure at wine. Um, at the same time, I don't need it to use a lot of sulfur dioxide because I try to work uh, properly with CO2, with the inert gas, and to evitate oxidation and a lot in contact with oxygen uh, you know I, i'm in the middle because i'm not so there's a question uh, from angela she asks if the whole cluster fermentation is unusual I think it's uh, no probably okay no no probably i'm the first producer that tell at the market that i use a uh, cluster in uh, cluster fermentation uh, first time when i come back i'm i have experience um, in the past in Antinori group in Apulia in Tormaresca and with winemaker with David I'm very friends and first time when I come back I tell I want to make Primitivo with the cluster fermentation you're crazy <laughs> you know for Apulian style it's no it's no usual uh, yes probably I'm one of the first producer yes yeah yes I am <laughs> no because I hadn't heard it before either and I don't think Almost nobody does it, I think. So. No, no, no. They are um, uh, very few producers in Italy. They use the techniques. Um, I know Aldo Fiorelli, also a journalist. They they have a heavens just it, one month ago with with Aldo Viola, for example. And yeah. Uh, but I am very um, I'm happy for that because. You know, when you're the first, probably people think about you, you're crazy. Uh, but now people start to ask me about that techniques. Also, my colleagues uh, ask some something more. Uh, just because, you know, commercial primitivo, it's 
they are no accents it's too much fruity but mm. not a lot of complexity usually they are very very good products too it's no 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 for everyone but the the most part of primitivo um they are not not a lot of complexity i try to have complexity with this this style of of, of vinification yeah um, I, enjoy, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I hope soon too when uh, okay I, at this moment uh, I have no um, no business with the USA I start to have uh, a small client in Miami um, but anyway you welcome in Apulia wherever you want for a holiday and then <laughs> you, you can see my, my land yeah. yeah sure sure um, uh, National Geographic tell about Puglia, it's the best region in the world for the last two years. True, <laughs> uh, true. Yeah. So, uh, anybody, so, uh, anybody, anybody more questions? More questions? Otherwise, uh, you, want you want to tell something more something about, more about, uh, about your, labeling? your labeling? Because, I mean, when I saw, when you, I saw you, how you do it, do you want to say something? Oh, yeah, about sure. The... Okay. This label born, okay, my first, this project, it's auto-sustainable project. Uh, I start with five angry bottles of rosé and uh, then uh, that that finance the the second vintage and now the, the the you know it's year by year i grow with the um, auto financiation um, at the first time when uh, my first five angry bottles uh, i want to make a label that uh, that can uh, give the impression of my sense of making wine uh, but it's impossible because no no graphics uh, and no uh, industry can stamp this kind of label for for only five angry piece then i i tell okay i want something different um, uh, i want to put in the, in the label just the accents essence of the of the wine uh, my wine it's called chakra it's they are you know one circle of idea and uh, in other way i want to have another sense when you taste wine uh, for that I, I want to have a um, label with um, uh, uh, it's like braille you know it's they are um, uh, three or four millimeters uh, you can touch because when you drink wine you can use another sense not only the four usually sense but you can use also the touch uh, and then I start with, um, I, I create my, with myself this stamp with a, a clear and, um, and corks. And then start to stamp with the classical, uh, classical vernice uh, paint. Uh, I start this label and then I, oh, the market appreciate a lot this idea to make bottle <laughs> but uh, every bottle each bottle it's different to the other just because uh, the wine it's different probably and then also the label it's different uh in the in the label they are nothing in the front they are nothing right uh, because i think the people when see that kind of label tell what is this and then pick the bottle and try to understand what they what they, what what are um okay now all the bottle it's um, all the production it's like that one uh, the name of all the line it's chakra and obviously change the color of chakra like uh human chakra uh, they are also some sense to the color and the wine chakra red it's the first chakra and it's the chakra that connect people with the with land with the um, uh, with the world with the uh, yeah, with soy, the, the the correct term for uh, ancient South America people, it's Pachamama. <laughs> it's you know the the earth okay. of the yeah. And then, for example, the second crop, the sparkling wine, uh, it's a different style to make a sparkling wine um, because um, I call that bottle uh, om, it's chakra blue, uh, but it's also homage homage to Conegliano. Because when I study in Conegliano, all the vigneron, all the viticulture people in Conegliano drink Prosecco, but drink Surli Prosecco, 
no commercial one yeah everyone every family in veneto in that area of veneto traconelliano and valdobbiadene drink a lot of prosecco but all prosecco is sparkling in the bottle it's yeah, just surli or col fondo they call it uh, and then i went to come back with these techniques in apulia i start to make col fondo in valeditria and uh, chakra blue it's the chakra they can find here um, it's a chakra they connect uh, people with um, uh, discover new uh, new sense new taste uh, they are some connection with color and wine. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Very interesting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, so... Now right. so, you have four. Now you have four. You have the Verdeca 100% and then you have the, the blend of... Okay, no, I have the, mm, the Verdeca right now in the market. It's called Chakra Verde. Uh, it's called uh, uh, it's verdegra and almost angry percent probably they are three or four percent of uh, marujo and uh, marujo probably because in that vineyard there are some plant of marujo uh, but um, uh, in the new one when they are the new crew for the old vineyards it's blended uh, grape blended uvaggio it's called Um, yeah. uh, any more questions from the, the people listening in? Otherwise, no. Um, so, anything more you want to say about this part of the wine and your. <laughs> anything you uh, want to add about your wines? Uh, no, try it. <laughs> <laughs> So you talked yeah. a lot about, uh, I mean, your idea of making wine and, and that you have these... Um, uh, ah, Fabian is here also. I think you met Fabian. Yeah, sure. Hi, Hi Fabian. Fabian. <laughs> yeah. So he tasted your wines. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> I to so see for, you. Uh, you talked a bit about this before, but for a person who doesn't... Uh, if you, in a very few words, would would say talk about your wines to a person who doesn't know Julia da Bra, okay. who doesn't know the, the area. How would you say that that your wines? I mean, should how do you want your wines to be perceived for an audience that is outside? Okay, I tried. Probably it's not too easy. Uh, anyway, I come, I coming from a part of Puglia. Um, I think one of the best region in the world. Uh, that that part of Puglia it's particular because it's um, in the hills but near to the to the sea uh, at the same time it's particular for the structure because we are truly it's UNESCO uh, it's under um, patrimonio of UNESCO and then uh, and then I try to represent my my region my area in a glass of wine um, my goal is when the people um, uh, taste the wine, I can understand which kind of area we have. Uh, because we have fresh area, full of stones. Uh, my, my town is called Castellana Grotte. Grotte it's caves, it's famous caves in the world, Castellana Grotte. And the soil, the name of the town represents what is the soil. A lot of stones from car uh, um, carbonic stone, um, yeah, calcareous stones. Sorry, uh, it's very white stones. Uh, also, we have uh, Grotta Bianca. Uh, Grotta Bianca, it's white caves. Uh, it's amazing. If you one day coming in that area, um, yeah, go to see her because it's unique in the world. It's uh, very very big caves, only white. It's uh, pure white. There are no any other color, just white. Uh, all this idea of th this part of region, I want to, to put in the glass of wine. Um, well, uh, this project burn in the vineyards. It's not born in the winery. Uh, and then uh, I'm winemaker, but I try to don't put a lot of my hand in transformation. I just help the transformation of um, natural products to the bottle. Uh, obviously, I just did it before. I'm technician. I study a lot of winemaking, 
and I try to, uh, in all the step, um, the no perfection, it's impossible. Uh, but I try to have all in all the steps just the right sense to to work, um, and then I try to don't use any clarify products or uh, try to don't have a lot of of filtration. For example, white and rosé, it's filtered uh, because um, I uh, the white and rosé uh, they don't do malolactic fermentation because I need to have freshness in the white. It's just for this motivation I have filtration. Uh, but for the other, I have no sugar residual in all my wine. All my wine is very acid, uh, very fresh and minerality and mineral. Uh, that is my idea about wine. You know, when the wine have a good freshness, you can drink first glass, second glass. If you, uh, <laughs> if you stay in a restaurant, with a with the friends, you can drink a, a bottle. Uh, hopefully, <laughs> ask the second bottle. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. The the idea yeah, of so making wine. Uh, so, uh, so, uh, 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 how many yeah, hectares of vineyards do you have? Oh, right now, mm, over uh, over vineyards is just less than five. It's uh, two and a half of primitivo and like a two hectare of white wine okay so fabian is uh is a brand ambassador for you here <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much fabian um I, i'm very enjoy to listen <laughs> your complimentation and thank you very no i agree i agree um yeah. I also normally ask uh, a bit about the food side. So how would you, I mean, there's a stupid to ask a okay. person from Puglia about food because there is so much uh, <laughs> different Yeah, there are a lot. Okay. Starting so for a simple with, uh, wine with something particular local, what would it be? Yeah, I, I can have an idea. Um, for example, um, uh, Chakra Verde, the Verdeca, uh, or the Bubbles, and depending if you prefer uh, sparkling or still, uh, it's very um, connect with the uh, um, crow fish. Uh, here in Apulia, it, we are very famous in Italy for it. A lot of um, uh, fish without any cooked process. Uh, we just love <laughs> crow fish. Uh, uh, it's very good comparison with the, um, uh, yeah, fruit, we call uh, fruit of sea, fruit di mare and white wine. Then, uh, if you want to stay also near to the sea, uh, the rosé, it's good um, in opposite with the cooked fish. For example, if you put uh, ombrina or uh, a fish with more um, uh, flavors, uh, in the home with the olives and the tomato, for example, very simple, we call aqua pazza, with rosé wine, it's so perfect. And then the red, I, I try to, to come back in, up the hills in Castellana, and um, my town and my area town, it's, um, uh, it's famous for use a lot of poor vegetable, uh, um, cicorielle, for example, and the fava beans. Uh, and it's perfect in combination with use vegetable and wine. Um, probably the sommelier, um, it, it's hard to compare, um, you know, vegetable and wine. But I think it's a, a good comparison uh, because it's too much easy to tell about meat and Fiorentina and wine. No, I, uh, yeah, uh, I don't like the easy, easy way. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, I think, for example, for vegetable, and uh, yeah, cooked, uh, for example, cicoriella with some tomato sauce and uh, olive oils and a, a good glass of red wine. That's very yummy. That's very yummy. <laughs> yeah. So Lee says, so says that she, 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 she likes the fish. fish. Oh, good. Uh, let's see what Angela said. She also likes the fish. <laughs> Okay, so it, it uh, seems to be light here, the, the pairings. <laughs> oh, wow, Richard Di Mare, I love it. <laughs> I really love Richard Di Mare. And um, ah, another, for example, another combination can be um, rosé with the spaghetti and Richard Di Mare. Uh, it's a very, 
oh yeah, spaghetti ricci di mare. Uh, it's hard to, to, to do because it's no, no for all the chef, but if you find a good chef, it's an amazing plate. They are, um, uh, it's like you heat uh, uh, sia in the, in the dish, in the plate. It's very particular. I love it. Yeah. yeah. No, it's very good. Uh, okay, so I think I finished my, my questions more or less. I don't know. Does anyone have any questions for Giovanni? Anything you want to know about the area? Uh, so you don't really export yet, but I, I remember you said that you're in uh, Miami. So I don't know. Yeah, but in Miami, I have um, uh, it's a private uh, uh, buyer. Uh, he buy the wine um, uh, for buy a 400 bottle because he's direct, director in um, um, uh, what's in the boat, uh, uh, in, um, what's his name? Um, la, 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 la. Okay, it's company of uh, Cruise, Crociere. And uh, he's director in this business. And for Christmas, he buy for Angry Bottle in, uh, for just for a gift to the other, you know, staff something so she asked if you ship wine if they would ask um yes i can but uh, you know ship wine uh, in us now it's very very expensive uh, for the taxation uh, you know um, they are some company they they send I, I can send wine but it costs for example angry dollars for um, for angry dollars for uh, for six bucks, but okay, yeah, for six uh, bottle. Yeah, that's true. I think we should just uh, arrange something with Laura, another friend of ours who has a wine club. So it might be a possibility to get you the wines in the US. Yeah. Anyway, uh, my my label is registered in the uh, US market uh, because these friends, um, uh, he have a friends importer and this important uh, give me the license for uh, export to the US. Uh, then I can send wine, uh, but at the moment I have not imported in the US. Okay. I export just something. Ah, I start to, um, to work uh, with Japan uh, okay. in October. Yeah, I send uh, some, because this these guys, it's very funny. <laughs> And he coming in Italy, and uh, he go to eat in uh, Michelin star restaurants, and he serve my wine. And then the, the day after, call me at seven o'clock in the morning. They tell, "Hi, Giovanni, you want to buy wine?" Oh yeah, good. <laughs> I'm in the vineyard. Uh, probably in the morning it's not possible. Oh no, we have fly tonight. We we just meet you. Uh, I know, uh, but we have no tourists. We have. Um, businessman and we want to buy no glass no bottle of wine but just make a business with you okay coming soon mm -hmm. and then i start to to, to have this uh, opportunity because they have 15 um shop of luxury food and wine in osaka and tokyo and in october start this business with uh, japan but at this moment no one in us hope soon <laughs> no i'm sure your wine are your wines are very good. So how many bottles do you do so far? Okay, at this moment in the total, it's, <laughs> yeah, in other words, uh, at this moment, it's um, almost 15,000. Uh, it's uh, 6,000 and a half um, uh, for the red one, 4,000 of rosé, uh, 3,000 and a half in Chakra Verde, 3,000 for Chakra Blue. Uh, the new one, it's Chakra Accents from the old vineyard, the crew, uh, for the first year is just 2,000 bottles. Okay. It will be more than 15 in the total. <laughs> okay, so um, I don't know, oh. if there's no, not any more questions, we can uh, so soon start to wrap it up. Is there anything else you would like the people to know that is specific about your winery or you uh, want to communicate about your, uh, your winemaking? that you haven't said already. I think we, we went through a lot of, of the things that are that I found particular about you when I when I met you and when I tasted the wine. So, but if you want to add something about... Uh, no, probably... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, ah, Nicola yeah. is here too. 
Hi, Nicola. Um, okay, so I don't know. Uh, well, we will meet in uh, in two weeks, I think. But for those of you yes. who have, uh, followed today, I thank you, and uh, I'm sure. Anyway, that... uh, anyone can write me for email or message or contact yes. me, whatever you want. And uh, for me, it's a pleasure to want to rap on you for all your information or <laughs> <laughs> what you need. I'm sure that soon of them, uh, some of them will soon come to Puglia, either with me or with somebody else. Or yeah, sure. So, um, if you come in Puglia, please write me. Uh, I organize also um, some tour in the vineyards. I call a Perivigna, and just for um, for the for give the opportunity to the people not only for the tourists but also for the my friends. For example, they don't know what is the the vineyards uh, word or what is the the vineyards and the natural idea of the territory. And uh, yeah, I, I organized this trip where I just introduced the people to the wine, uh, to the vineyard techniques, and then tasting wine and never food, obviously. <laughs> cool. That must be amazing to be in the vineyard <laughs> in that part. Yeah, when you're coming, if you have sometimes, I'm I'm very happy to introduce you in Valle di Tria. Yeah, I think I, I have time. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we can. We can make... <laughs> We can organize uh, welcome, for uh, or, uh, Thank you, Angela and Lee and, and all the others, Fabian. Who, thank uh, you, everyone. Thank you very much. And uh, if you want to, to get in contact with Giovanni, you can write him, as he said, uh, or you, you can try and uh, taste his wines when you come to Puglia or when you come to Italy. Uh, next week, I will actually have uh, the guys from Exotic Wine Travel as guests. Uh, so we will oh, do uh, wine vlogging and uh, wine videos and, and things like that. Uh, and then after that, I'm uh, I'm not I'm taking a break, so it's going to be a bit of a holiday in August, and I will be actually in Puglia for ten days or so. And uh, so thank you everyone who were here and I hope you enjoyed this, this live stream. I think it was very interesting and very much fun. Uh, so thank you also Giovanni for wanting to be my guest. That, uh, Welcome, uh, it's my pleasure and my honor is your guest tonight. Uh, <laughs> thank so you very much. See you soon and uh, I hope you join me also next week, next Tuesday. Ciao, ciao. All right. <laughs>